Hello, this is the second video concerning woodwind instrument designer, software that aids you in designing woodwind musical instruments. I presume that you've seen the first introductory video and decided, gotta get me some. This video will help you get some and uh, download the, the program, install it, get it up and running, function ver verify um, functionality. I'm Edward Court, one of the de developers and designers of this software. So let's get started. During this video, we're going to show you how to get the program, extract it on your system, get it up and running, um, and some special considerations for those running Unix or Linux systems, how to initially configure it, how to show that it works, how you can report to us any issues you find, and although I can't see why, uh, and uninstall the program if you don't want it anymore. For those that want to get right to it and aren't going to listen to the rest of it, let me show you the the URLs um, that will be referenced in the video. Uh, the Java download page, uh, this is a uh, Java application. Where to get the program, our release page, uh, where to report issues, a page for our video tutorials, and the getting started page using WI Designer. So let's get get started. As I said, this program runs under Java. That allowed us to write the program once and allow you to run it on any of the supported operating systems. So you will have to install Java before you can run the program. This is the Java page, the download page for all the supported operating systems. Uh, Windows in various flavors, uh, Mac OS, Linux in various flavors, and the supported Solaris, the Unix. Um, I encourage you to get the latest version. We've verified functionality for WI Designer uh, under Java 8. Earlier versions may or may not work, so please get the latest version. Okay, let's go get the program. Here's what the, the release page looks like for this initial public release. Uh, this same URL um, will get you the latest re release as we update it. You can see there are various pieces you can download. The only one you really need to download, and the only one we're going to download today, is the zip file that has the program in it and all of its supporting files. So let's just go ahead and download that. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it just to my desktop. That's not the, the greatest place to save things, um, but it makes it easier for this tutorial. Depending on your connection speed, this may or may not take a little bit of time. Uh, it's already downloaded to mine. It's just verifying that uh, it doesn't have any viruses in it. Uh, it's, a, it's a 10 megabyte file, so it's not tiny. So let's look at what we just downloaded. It's a zip file. And any of the operating systems that are supported um, have some form of zip utility. Um, I'm on a Windows platform and I use IZARC um, for mine. So if we open that, you can see there's a top level folder and that's the one that we want to um, expand intact. So I'm just going to hit extract. IZARC wants you to wants to create its own folder um, with the name of the zip. I don't want that in this case, so I'll just 
put it right to the desktop. I want the original folders intact and let's just restore the file attributes that are, are in those files and extract it. And we're done. So here's the folder that's created, WI Designer version 1.0. Let's look inside. So a number of, of, of directories, um, a constraints directory, which we'll get into a, in a little bit, um, some sample files for um, Native American flutes, and some sample files for, for whistles. A readme, which again we'll get into in a second, um, on Unix. This is, is actually the program. At, at this point in time, I can run the program in many operating systems just by double-clicking it. Again, this assumes you have Java installed. So if I double-click it, program comes up. Um, I'm going to close it down and talk about some of the, the vagaries of other operating systems. Uh, if you're in a Unix system, a Linux system, um, double clicking might work except the first time that you do it it'll say this isn't an ex executable file because it was created on a Windows system that doesn't know what an executable file is so let's open the readme and and walk you through it um, the easiest way is to just change the mode of that file and those on on Linux systems are familiar with this command change mode and all we're doing here is changing the mode for all users to executable and if you do change mode a plus x and the name of that jar file everything will work just fine if your system allows double clicking um, on, on in a graphic interface. If not, and in any system, you can run the program from a command line. And it's this command line, java minus jar, and then the name of the jar file. Let's run that right now, just for the for fun of it. Um, I'm going to open up a window here. Okay, so there's a window. I'm going to write that same, same command. So I'm in the directory, and you want to run the program in the, in the directory um, that it exists so it can find its library files. So we're going to type that command. It's java minus jar wi designer.jar and then the program comes up just the same way. So you could, if you have problems or you're running um, not in a graphics environment, you could invoke WI Designer simply by making a little script that has that one, one command line in there that invokes the program. Let's get rid of that. And for systems that, that support it, uh, Windows, uh, Mac OS, you can create a shortcut to this um, jar file, put it anywhere you want, and call it anywhere, anything you want, and invoke it that way. Okay, so now we, we can get the, the program up and running. in any operating system. Let's now do that and configure it initially. Bring it up with the shortcut. So initially it'll, it'll come up with this size looking like this. Um, I like to put it over on the right side of the screen. I like to make it just a little bit bigger. It will remember that those settings the next time you bring it up. So if we close her down, 
and bring it up again. Now it's in that position. Initial configuration um, is done in the options pane right here. So I have it set up initially to come up with a, a Native American flute study. Uh, study is this pane right here. Uh, if you're doing whistles instead, you can configure it here and come up in this view. Um, and the next time you bring it up, it'll come up expecting you to want to make whistles. Um, for temperature, my standard temperature is 72 degrees, which in Celsius is 22.22 uh, degrees. I'll never change that so we can keep that there and it, it persists and my reference relative humidity is 45 percent again um, that will stay uh, the interesting part is this constraints directory so remember when we exploded this there was a constraints directory these are a set of starting constraints that the optimizer uses for design um, I would recommend you don't trash them, <laughs> that you actually use them. You may move them anywhere else, but uh, this configuration we're going to go through should be done after you've moved them wherever you want them. Uh, let's assume that we're going to put them right where they're at, and we have to tell the program where that directory is. So I'll hit a browse, and again, these, these file open interfaces and so forth um, will look differently different on different operating systems um, this is what it looks like on windows so i'll go to my desktop go to the wi designer folder that we created and click on constraints now constraints has has some subdirectories um, NAF study model whistle study model as we add more uh, woodwinds this directory tree will expand under the NAF study model. Um, it has a number of different supported optimizers and this is what the the program calls them and then under each of those has a directory for all of the the number of, number of holes that you've implemented in flutes and if you create a five hole flute it, the program will create a directory call five and a seven hole flute it'll create a directory called seven that's why you want if at all possible to let the program manage all of this and so we're going to let it manage it simply by showing it where the root of all of those constraints are which is this directory right here that's it um, NAF study options currently they're all in the general study pane um, and there's a few additional options if you're going to make a whistle. Blowing level, um, air pressure, and CO2 concentration. For the NAF um, design, it uses the default values for those. So we say save, and now forevermore, unless you change them, um, they're going to be the default values for the program. So let's see if this works. Let's open an instrument file. And we have some sample instruments. So initially the, the program will set you to whatever is defined as the root directory um, in your operating system. For Windows it's the documents directory. Um, after you've actually opened a file in some directory the program will remember the last directory used so we will go to WI designer we're doing a flute study a Native American flute study and we're going to go into instruments and we're going to choose the same instrument that we chose uh, in the introdu introductory video and we'll bring it up and there's an instrument and the program so far brings it up fine um, and we can draw it so functionality is still wonderful let's bring up a tuning file now 
notice that it has a recent pane here. Um, it was empty when we first brought the program up. We've opened a file. So it'll, it'll show the last four files that you, you've opened. So we've opened one file. Let's open now a tuning file. So go up a directory. Again, this interface will look different for different operating systems. Um, bring up a tuning. And if you just click it, you'll see what uh, metadata is associated with that file. And let's open that. Tuning comes up. So far, so good. We can ask what the tuning of that instrument is. Um, and that's correct. Again, you would have seen these same values when we did the introductory video. So that's cool. And now let's select an optimization. Let's... Uh, Let's just change the whole size and position for that tuning. And now we'll go in. This is going to check our configuration when we did our constraints directory. And we're going to open a constraint. And it found that directory tree that we specified. You can see the, the long tree um, that it looked in. And we'll choose again the same constraint set as the introduction and do an optimization. Takes a few seconds. It gave us a new flute which has better tuning than the old flute. We presume, yes, from 21 cents average deviation. We got it down to <clears throat> about five cents average deviation. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the program seems to be working just fine. We can kill the whole thing. And if we bring it back up again, you can see the three files that we opened. We are again in uh, Native American flute study. Um, the screen is sized the way we liked it. So we get a thumbs up for the verification on this. Now if you happen to notice any issues with any of this install or the initial running of the program, um, I'd like you to report it to us. Um, the mechanism for reporting that, I would like you to do this through our issues page on our on our website. Reason for this is that then all the developers will have access to it. All the other users of the program will have access to see what issues are outstanding, how they've re been re either addressed or resolved, and um, it's it's the proper sharing environment rather than one-off emails to one of the developers. Uh, the so here is the issues page ready to create a new issue. The first time you click this button, and, and the page may look a little bit different for you uh, on the owner of this repository, and so I get all the bells and whistles. You may have fewer bells and whistles when you bring up this page. Um, the first time you click up this new click this new issues button, it will GitHub, which is um, the repository owner, will ask you to log in. So you will have to create a, an account with GitHub in order to, to create an issue. It's re relatively painless. Uh, name and email address is what you're doing. And then you can report issues. Please do it through this mechanism. And finally, should you want to, uninstall this program. Um, it is fairly painless, so to get rid of the vast majority of what this program has has spewed out, these three files that I've created, WI Designer Zip, get rid of that, get rid of the folder, and any shortcuts that you had to happen to create. Um, 
it doesn't write any files to your program files directory and, and so forth, but it does write a little bit to your system. And it's, it's so minor, you, le you can leave it in, you run some risk getting rid of it. Um, it for the screen layout, it wrote, writes one file to your user directory, and that user directory will be different for each operating system. It's just a, a little binary file that says what the layout is. Um, you can go search for that, um, search for Woodwind Instrument Designer, and you will find that in your operating system as a file. You can just delete it. You can delete it at any time for that matter. The second um, set that it writes, and it will write it in different places for different operating systems, is the, um, those preferences that we set in the options pane. Uh, it persists those as well. In Windows, it persists them in the registry. So if you really have to delete them, and that's an advanced user operation to, to delete registry entries, um, again, search for Woodwind Instrument Designer. In this case, no spaces between the words, but an underscore, and you'll find the, the entries for those preferences. Delete them, and I'll emphasize this again, at your own risk. The, the program regedit uh, tells you, this is a dangerous operation. Uh, leave them in and everything's fine. In other operating systems, they might be INI files, they might, might be .pref files. It just depends on how Java writes preferences in your particular operating system. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't ever delete them. I don't see why you'd ever want to delete the program, but your, your preferences. Uh, so again, the program URLs that you might want to to see are Java, to download your Java version, the release page to get the latest release, um, the issues page to report issues, uh, the video tutorial page, and this is the second video tutorial. I expect that there will be multiple other video tutorials. I'm not much for writing written documentation, uh, although Burton, who is um, primary mover for the whistle uh, study uh, will put most of or has put most of his documentation on the wiki page um, that is found here and and his tutorials will be accessed through that wiki page um, so check often for those video tutorials um, as I will be generating them as Interest grows as people give commentary on what they want to figure out how to do and as I have time to, to develop them. Um, I hope you enjoy the program. Have a nice day.